OK, let's get across today's headlines with Sky News political reporter Cam Redden. Cam, great to see you. Foreign Minister Penny Wong will visit Israel early next year. Why has it taken so long for a government minister to visit? And why isn't it now? Why is it still weeks away? Yeah, the timing is really interesting, Aaron, for a couple of reasons, including the one you mentioned there. For trips like this, we don't normally get this sort of a heads up. The trip by Penny Wong to Israel, the first by the well, the most senior foreign minister in Australia, won't take place until early in 2024. Before that, though, between now and then, we're going to see this notable uptick in the presence of Australian politicians in Israel. Next week, there's a bipartisan delegation being led by Simon Birmingham. That includes both Labor and Liberal MPs going to Israel. And before even that happens, the Assistant Foreign Minister Tim Watts. He announced yesterday that he'll be visiting Israel next week as well as the occupied Palestinian territories, Qatar and Egypt to push Australia's advocacy for a two-state solution. And alongside that, that line that we've heard quite a bit, a two-sided ceasefire, the message from the government uh, pretty clear, not telling one side or the other to stop fighting, telling both sides to cease as well. So over this next sort of five to six week period, we're going to see Australia really step into the international dialogue in a way around this conflict that hasn't happened really to this point. Jim Chalmers will hand down the mid-year budget update next week, but anyone hoping for more cost of living relief, well, they'll be disappointed and probably not surprised. Yeah, the Treasurer are pretty clear. This is not an opportunity he's going to use to make new announcements. You think back a bit over 12 months, Aaron, and the Treasurer handed down his mini-budget in October before my EFO. That got the ball rolling on some of Labor's big promises, including around cost of living and things like paid parental leave and expansion to that. But this is not going to be the case next week. We, instead, we're going to get a more traditional my EFO. Now, my EFO, just to cut through the jargon, is essentially just an update <laughs> of where the Treasury believes our economy is going. And if you want one key figure to watch, Erin, it's going to be the projection around inflation. The budget in May projected Australia's inflation rate by the middle of next year would be at three and a quarter percent. As of October, year on year, we're at 4.9 and coming down. So the big one to watch next week is where does Treasury think inflation is going to be at the end of the financial year? Are we going to be better off or worse off than we expected in May? The Treasurer is saying don't expect new announcements, don't expect additional relief on the front of cost of living, but he does say he'll use this opportunity and the time between my EFO next week and the next budget in May to decide whether or not additional spending is required. As we get closer to the budget in May, uh, if there's more that we can do with it, which is consistent with our budget constraints uh, and is right for the economic conditions uh, at the time, then obviously, as we have always said, we're prepared to contemplate it. There had been some speculation too, Aaron, that we might be headed for a second surplus after the first one in May. That was the first since 20, 2007, 2008. But the Treasurer also revealing on Sky News this week that this uh, coming week's MyFO will not forecast a second surplus. In other words, it's expecting a deficit for the current financial year. Thank you for making that very, very clear and easy to understand, Cam. You're a good man. Now, the mining industry is up in arms over Labor's new industrial relations laws. What's been their main gripe? I'll see if I can make industrial relations simple as well. <laughs> good luck. Good not. luck. <laughs> if, if this fight has been anything to go by, we've seen the millions of dollars that have been spent in advertising campaigns around this. But look, what viewers really need to know is that amongst a few other things, one of the most controversial parts of the government's IR reforms passed through the parliament yesterday. These are the same job, same pay reforms relating to labour hire. It's one of the key sticking points for business. And why there's been so much anger around it, to cut through some of the political process here, is that there was an expectation pretty broadly that this wouldn't be dealt with until a parliamentary committee returned a report in February. So not quite down tools for Christmas, but this really caught a lot of people, including the business community, completely off guard yesterday when Tony Burke, the Workplace Relations Minister, walked out alongside David Pocock and Jackie Lambie, the two senators that essentially secured the passage of key parts of this bill. Um, one member of the business community told me, though, Aaron, this fight is a long way from over, to use their exact words. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot more campaigning over Christmas, and in including up to the release of this report next year, some of the big aspects still up for a fight around casualisation and pathways towards full-time employment, as well as changes for the gig economy and this idea of creating an employee-like status to give Uber drivers and others more rights and arguably higher pay too. Joe Biden's son, Hunter, is facing nine criminal charges over tax fraud. Will we see anything come of this or will they be like all the others? 
One thing I'm certain we're going to see a lot of, Aaron, is the words Hunter Biden escape the mouth of Donald Trump because he's, of course, back on the campaign trail Mm -hmm. after a month or so of uh, not so much prominent campaigning. These nine new charges relate to allegations of tax fraud. It is actually relating to tax that has since been paid, but there are claims dating back multiple years arguing or the allegation against Hunter Biden is that that tax wasn't paid on time or in the, the appropriate way. I think the context is really interesting as we look ahead to the race for the White House in 2024, Aaron. Donald Trump is back on the campaign trail. We're just over a month away from the Iowa caucus. It didn't work for him as well in 2020, attacking Hunter Biden. It didn't get the skin off Joe Biden Mm. that he was hoping for. Does he go back to the well between now and the middle of January in Iowa? I think that's going to be a really interesting strategic choice Donald Trump will need to make in terms of his race for the White House next year. It'll be fascinating to watch it all play out. Cam, brilliant as always. Thank you so much for your time.